Hi and welcome to this video and what I'm going to do in this video is very briefly I'm going to talk about the Ciro 15mm anamorphic f1.8 I'll be showing you some examples I'll be talking about the good and the bad obviously why I like the lens what I don't like about the lens and the settings that I use on a full frame e2 f6 Z cam camera. Now, what I do like about the lens straight away is the fact that although it's custom built for micro four thirds, it actually has even a wider coverage area than APS C. So, whatever camera you're shooting with, if you go to full frame mode on your camera and then crop in on post, you'll make more use of that widescreen yumminess. The lens is small, it's only 10 centimetres tall, it's quite a heft in there, uh, it's 500 grams and it's all metal. So these are all good things. What is not good about it is that it has a very, very short focus throw and it's, that's, you know, that's not a bad thing in itself but when you're looking for fine degrees of focusing and you're in a run and gun situation then um, it's, it's going to be a fine line to get the focusing. When I was shooting with this lens, I was actually trying to operate a Z-cam on a, on a Steadicam, and unfortunately my monitor uh, tipped the balance for weight, so I had to, I was occasionally holding the monitor with one hand and the Steadicam with the other hand, which was very, very difficult to shoot in. What this lens has done, it's actually democratised anamorphic shooting for the masses. It's almost like what the Model T Ford was to the motor car industry. And of course, it's no longer the newest, most, most desirable model. There are other full frame models, but they're all about sort of 1,500 pounds. So what about just, you know, going to eBay and finding one of these little beauties for 350 to $450? Will that get you there? Well, let's have a look at the footage and Let's see what we think.
thing about anamorphic I find is that it's quite difficult to to go back to spherical after you've you've had a taste of that widescreenness. I mean, you you know you take for instance a room, a room on a on a 15 millimeter lens, it's it's just that. Suddenly, on on the you've got the sort of like that same distance. I'm shooting with a 15 millimeter lens now. Suddenly on anamorphic, there's that 27 millimeter stretch either side of the image, and in, and rooms look big, and you're creating movies. It's the same for landscape pictures. You can be out outdoor shooting, and you've got this 27 millimeter reach almost. So I was shooting on the Z cam, and I was shooting at cinema 5K, and what that does is it gives you a tiny amount of vignetting around the edge of the lens. You can use vignetting uh, correction tools in DaVinci Resolve, but I've left it just to show you what it looks like. The Z-Cam crops in on the full frame sensor at Cinema 5K. I set the variable frame rate to 60 frames a second. It gave me a little bit of slow motion to iron out some of those kinks in the, in the movement of the Steadicam, which are quite a few, obviously. Um, there's a very, very good uh, guy on YouTube, and I'm going give to give him a special plug. His name is Roger in Finland, and he, in one of his videos, actually goes through and lists the 17 um, different crop ratios that you can get on, on the Z-Cam, starting from full frame right down to um, HD. It's a very good video, and I'll link it down in the description. So when you bring the footage into Premiere, in the actual project window, you can select all the files in one go. I'm quite sure about that. Right-click, and on that drop-down list, select Modify. If you select Interpret Footage, and then a dialog box will appear, and somewhere down the middle, the chance to switch from square footage to 1.3. So what that does is it tells Premiere that all those clips need to be pulled out by a ratio of 1.33. And then if you bring one file into a Premiere timeline that you haven't created, the timeline will automatically conform to that resolution. Now, if you're editing this footage in DaVinci Resolve, um, Here's the project that we're working on at the moment. And here's a clip of Diana. And if I go to clip attributes, exactly the same as in Premiere, I can change the format resolution from square into 1.33 or 1.3. It's entirely up to you. I think the difference is quite marginal. And because obviously with this project, I'm mixing square footage with anamorphic footage in in this clip attribute i'm just leaving the footage as square so it's possible within this timeline for uh, spherical and anamorphic footage to exist uh, side by side probably as the great george bush once said man and fish can live in harmony anyway now what's nice about uh, DaVinci Resolve is in the uh, edit window and I go down into this little cog in the bottom right hand window all the uh, settings the project settings are here laid out and um, it's quite handy to have them all in one place and there's a lot of options and I'm, I've got to be honest with you I'm a new user I'm one of these editors who's uh, moved over to uh, DaVinci Resolve from Premiere so some of this is quite new to me and it's quite detailed and involved so I'll tell you the way that I managed to make this project work and the output settings in a second but there you are that's my master settings I've conformed the project to be exactly the same as the footage that I bought in I didn't select CinemaScope because CinemaScope I believe is a two time squeeze and that's not what this is now what's what I can't find and I've looked around on the internet is that as far as monitoring this footage is concerned you don't get a monitoring option for 1.33 so I use a 4k 
25 and the reason I don't scale down to HD is because I find it's doing less interpreting of the footage so it plays back quicker off a, off a solid state drive um, and you can go into image scaling here if it was all anamorphic um, then you can stretch frame to all corners if you want so if I cancel that and I come back to now we want to deliver this project and what we're going to do here is we're going to keep the same settings there and we're going to test a little bit just to see how this is going to look so I generally just you, you can just select I and O on a test call this test you see we could select scope there but scope or we could there are various different settings and I might select them if I wasn't mixing footage but I'm going to custom select my footage and uh, add to render queue render and then you see the footage pop into what you expect the, the 1.33 anamorphic or 1.3 and that's weird that you don't get to monitor that as you're editing it in DaVinci Resolve. Of course, if someone knows why that is and I'm missing a trick, then please, by all means, uh, leave a comment down in the comment section. I really love this lens. I mean, it's small, it's it's not light, obviously. Well, it's fairly light, but um, the image it gives you is very natural, but I can't wait to see, really, when, when the money allows me to, what um, a 35 millimeter or a Tarantino-esque uh, 40 millimeter on a full frame sensor would would bring because I've got a funny feeling those results are going to be even better um, but this will have to keep me going for a while and at $350 I mean it's it's fantastic so what do you think do you think it's a good lens do you think the footage has come across well if you, if you subscribe and like, then I can make more of these review type videos, which I, I'd love to do. I'd love to actually see if Siri would send me a full frame lens. Siri would send me full frame lens. And then I can, I can do a comparison video. I've left a link to Diana's um, Instagram because she's a wonderful model to work with. So thanks Diana for your time on this project. Um, and that's it. So. Thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.